are listening to the Books as Bad as Twilight podcast, where we are reading Elixir by Hilary Duff and Elise Allen. Visit us on our website, www.babatpodcast.com. Get lost with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's going in the intro. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, I'm going to stop now. Unless you have something funny to say. Uh, boobs. <laughs> So I guess we should introduce ourselves. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know, in case. I mean, know like, who if you are. turned into this episode, you probably know who we are. Yeah, but I'm Brittany. I'm Danielle, and I'm Tatiana. Mm-hmm. And we are books as bad as Twilight. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this is a very uh, lackluster introduction for us. Look, I apologize. Look, it's the morning. We yes. just had our breakfast. We're getting there. Folks. Loading up on coffee. Loading Go up fe-fe. on coffee. So. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Mm-hmm. Audible is the leading provider in audiobooks online. Mm-hmm. And today, with our special link, audibletrial.com slash B-A-B-A-T, you can get a free trial to Audible for 30 days and a free audio book. <laughs> Did you have fun dancing, Tatiana? <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to actually download the book. As okay. We, as we talk? As we talk. Yeah, because you guys go through pages so... Slowly, that I can actually probably read along. Well, I'm, I'm kind of hoping. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm hoping I'm we can trying. go. No, 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 no not no, no, no. bust on you. I know, but no, I mean, I literally, thought... can probably keep up. I actually that was think, so funny. Though. I was gonna say, actually, we should probably like try to move a little faster this time, like because that was <laughs> that was brutal. Okay, <laughs> like, okay. that was bad so now. funny. <laughs> like, oh my god, it's not even coming up. Oh, where are you looking? Uh, Kindle. Mm. Am I misspelling elixir? I found it. E-L-I-X. Oh, I see all three of them. Yeah, devoted and true. That makes me think of the Karen Kingsbury books again, like Redemption. Remember, <laughs> except at least I don't use the same letter. Yeah, good job, Hillary Duff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like one word, right? Oh, this is a New York Times bestseller. It doesn't take much to be a New York. I mean, it does take a lot, <laughs> but at, like Whoa. like getting published, first right? Of all. <laughs> I shouldn't say because there's some people who are really hard and get in the New York Times oh, bestseller. It's not but a cheap like book. a New York Times Don't bestseller. Buy it, honestly, wait, it's not cheap. It's well, the actual physical book is five ninety nine. Is it more expensive? As yes, the it's eight ninety nine. Oh, that's here. Read some on Kindle. You're gonna buy Ooh. it. When's the next time you guys are doing this? We don't know yet. Actually, probably in like a week. If I'm buying this. You better make sure it's what I'm available. That's true. <laughs> that's so true. So when are you available? I mean, I'm very flexy. Well, not if you're going to be in California. <laughs> it's just like end of October, beginning of November. All right. So we start off chapter three where she's just seen this guy in her photo and he's in her closet. Mm-hmm. So. So um, we kind of like really qu- like breezed over the last couple of pages um, last episode. So I just want to like say why this is weird. So she saw this guy in all these photos through the entire three week trip that she felt drawn to pull 20 pictures out of a vague amount. (laughs) Let's just say that way. There was a vague amount and he was everywhere in these photos and in places where he shouldn't be. And the last photo she looked at, looked at, he was floating in the air, Mm -hmm. um, uh, like a hundred feet in the air. Right. So she freaked out, took several peaches, peaches, pictures while spinning around in, in her a chair. flash of wild inspiration <laughs> yes and then she's like okay this is pretty unremarkable the 10th picture she saw him in the the darkness of her closet oh what follows is not a sentence i expected to read. do you want to read it <laughs> oh do i need to put these on yeah no, go for i it. mean if you want to yeah, yeah i'll be able to hear what what you sound like i sound like <laughs> <laughs> all right so basically she opened up the 10th photo and screamed out loud. It was her darkened closet with the man inside the door. Mm-hmm. So she's basically in her bedroom. She just took a bunch of pictures around her empty room. And then she opened up the last one. And there he is, creepily in her closet. I don't know what you girls would do, but I'd be like, I'm I out of here. Out of I'm there. out of here. <laughs> like, I, And then slowly come back, maybe, you know? I would yeah. whip but around. I would freak out. I'd probably whip around and then like be like, should I open the door or should I just run? <laughs> Hold on. But Clea does none of these. No. Chapter three. 
I stared at the screen frozen. <laughs> yeah. And inwardly, I chastised myself. <laughs> I had expected to see him, right? It was what I imagined might happen. It was why I took the pictures of my room in the first place. It's all padding, by what? the way. It's all padding, all those sentences. Yeah. All she needed to say is... Like, Holy shit, there is a creepo ghost in my closet. I'm out of here. Actually, that would mm-hmm. be nice. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, it's all that needed to be said. Um, I mean, listen, I don't care how world traveled she is. This this girl must have seen a couple of horror movies. This is how all of them start. Mm-hmm. There is a ghost True. in your closet. Oh, God. Also, like, it's like... I- <laughs> <laughs> I still hadn't turned from the computer screen. I couldn't. I was fairly certain he wasn't really there, but I couldn't shake the v- the idea that he was. I Wait. mean, in a horror movie, this is the part where you would take your camera and start snapping more pictures to see if mm-hmm. he gets closer. Right. And when he does, you just don't do anything. No. Because you're the first person well, in the horror movie to die. Mm-hmm. And then others, five years later, learn from your mistakes. True. I... Are you... You're welcome. Whoever's <laughs> going to use it as a plot to the next horror movie. I have a question, mainly for Brittany, since you haven't read it, but you can answer it too. Does it sound like? Is it kind of weird to you that she never once thinks to herself, "Is he a ghost?" Because I don't think it ever says in the narration. Uh, up to this point, no, because she w- thought uh, not that she. She uh, when I said no, I mean no. She didn't think it up to this point. Okay, yeah. Um, but she. Her character is developed in a way that she wouldn't think ghost right away because she already established that her father was the whimsical one. Her and her mother are pretty yeah, straightforward. I feel like you don't have to be whimsical, though, to think ghost. Yeah. Well, like, if, not, you not believe, believe, if you believe in ghosts. Not believe it, but like, are ghosts real? Like, what is happening? Well, like, she must have thought about it because at some point in chapter two, she was like, Yeah. Who was this man? What was he? Ideas bolted through my brain, but every one of them was impossible. Mm. Yeah, so she she counteract like she yeah. she wrote it off. Um, kind of like didn't going, put it down on yeah paper. I feel She's like, like that would be probably not a thing to write off. Well, yeah. she she explains that there has to be a rational explanation for it so it she's not thinking ghost she's thinking it's an actual stalker because um in the previous chapter she was saying how her parents would often hire undercover bodyguards to follow her whenever yeah we didn't touch on that uh (laughs) whenever she traveled especially to dangerous places so this might have been an undercover bodyguard or an actual stalker because she never noticed him. Well, I think it's interesting also, like, when it says, like, I guess for me, I was surprised because, like, it says he's floating in one of the pictures. So to me, that's, like, clearly something supernatural. Like, cause, yeah. like so that's why I was, like... But he's so also he, floating very casually. So maybe she was like, well, he's, his demeanor is so weird. It might be a trick of the light. It might be the trick of the camera. There has to be an explanation. Okay, I'll believe you. So, um, she's she's starting to feel unhinged, and then she hears footsteps, a rush of air, as a hand reached out and grabbed my throat. She screamed yeah. and wheeled around, but nothing was there. Dun, dun, dun! Mm-hmm. You look really interested right she's now. She's speed reading. <laughs> Where'd you get to? No, not at all. I didn't get that far. Mm-hmm. Because I was listening to your stories, too. Um... And so she ends up going to the closet Mm -hmm. and uh, she flings it open, um, but there's nobody in there. It's empty. Of course. Yeah, of course, she says. And um, so then she's um, she's thinking about how like the fact that he's in all these photos with her traveling around, um, how would he appear in all those photos? Mm -hmm. And she's trying to think, as you were saying, like rationally about it. So. Um, she starts to, uh, well, actually, maybe you want to take it from here? Well, that, she also tries to explain it in a way. She needs sleep. Yeah. So she thinks that she's seeing this guy in all these pictures because she hasn't slept. No, because she said before that, oh, where did she say that? I needed sleep. This would yeah. all make sense no, after I slept. No, but before that, oh, imagining it and seeing it were two different things. The theory I could chuck off the lack of sleep, but this... She has hard proof she's in the picture. I, she just took a picture of her closet and he came out. It's like the second paragraph in chapter three. 
Oh, okay. So she knows for a fact that now he's in her pictures, but she's like, whatever, I'm just going to go to sleep now in this room where the closet is, where the guy is. And I know for a fact he's there because I just snapped a picture of him, hard proof. Yes. That he's in there. I was going to say, I think it's I just... I can't go to any other bedroom in the house. This is the one I'm going to choose to sleep in because what could possibly go wrong? I'm sorry. What 17-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> I am in my 30s. There's no fucking way. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that's go a... sleep anywhere else. I'll be like, Raina, right. hey, you got an extra room in that house of yours? Actually, yeah, I would totally do that. Why don't you call your friend and be like, yeah. especially if she's like 10 mm-hmm. feet away. Right. Hey, how about we do a sleepover? Because there is like freaky ghost in my closet. And I wouldn't go to sleep. I would call you over to confirm that there is, in fact, a person in the picture. And I'll be like, watch this, watch this. Right. Yeah. Uh, come on. I... I... When I was 19 and the ghost slammed my closet door, I literally just picked up myself and went to the living room. Exactly. But, you move. You don't But I also sleeping. believe in ghosts. And she has no idea what this is. And she's just like, whatever. I'm just going to lay my head down yeah. and hope everything works out fine. That was like one time I, um, I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And I don't know if somebody... I don't know what happened. But all of a sudden the door the bathroom door slammed like didn't slam shut just it was shut already it just slammed something slammed against it and i sat there and oh. i was like i don't know how i can leave this bathroom right now like i'm terrified <laughs> oh, that was in this house in this house it, and it was like a year or two ago hmm. um you obviously love the bathroom because you're here yeah, with us now right <laughs> i honestly think that somebody went to use the bathroom and didn't see the door was shut because it was dark and, and like, they ran into, into it. it oh that's really funny <laughs> and they didn't i told them about it nobody remembered they're like no, I didn't hear anything, so I think they were just half asleep, maybe. Yeah. I don't well, know. Yeah. But Or the cat. Or yeah, the, the cat. cat. <laughs> or the cat. <laughs> the door. I think that's the cat actually is very possible. Like... The cat doesn't she doesn't really go near the bathroom too much, so I'm going well, to you were that. in there, so maybe she was just like, Hey Danielle, come on, come on now, let me in. Or... It was pretty loud, let's yeah. put it that way. I don't know if the cat could do like if she did it, I would probably like cause she'd probably put her paw there and <laughs> like go like that. That's really funny, She's though. She's a silly one. But, yeah. I can imagine the cat just running. That, can you imagine? That, that honestly seems like the most reasonable explanation, yeah. though, that the cat ran into it. Yeah. Look, guys, I know my cat. All right, <laughs> folks, come on now. Don't put... <laughs> But you don't believe in ghosts, so what's more rational, the cat or a ghost? Look, that's... Well, okay. <laughs> or um, a half-asleep person. I was, I was going to say a half-asleep person. That's yeah. what I would say. I'd say my brother, more likely. Not my dad, but it could yeah. be, it definitely, like, a ghost is definitely a slant. Do, did I tell you about this? You did tell me about it, but you can yeah. tell her. Yeah. Do you, I, I don't told think you she about knew, slant, Yeah, but the here's door. the thing. She doesn't really believe it. Like, this is not something she's used to. Like, you are used to it. Your family's kind of yeah. used to it. Right, yeah. She doesn't. She's got a bodyguard. She's got a best friend within, like, a reachable distance. Mm-hmm. But she's just like, I'm not going to talk to anyone about this <laughs> crazy thing. There's a human, or not a human... There is a man in the picture of my yeah. closet that I literally just took two seconds ago, but I'm just going to not tell anybody. I'm not going to call Ben over. I'm not going to call Raina. I'm not going to be all like texting them like, hey, there is because something Because the crazy. author wants to keep her there. That's why. I and also, I know that's a bad answer. It is a terrible answer. I know. I agree. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to defend this because she also, she is sleep deprived and she has extreme thoughts. Her therapist has said this. She's not dealing with the grief of her father. She has terrifying nightmares. All that compiled on top. It's reasonable that she thinks she's going nuts. I think the. I agree with you. I think the book. Especially because so, she felt like someone grabbing her throat, but obviously no one's there. Yeah, and I agree with that. The thing I'll retort with that, because I don't disagree with you when I say this, but what I'm saying is that I think that the, the way it's written, she's just poorly characterized in yeah. my opinion like she's sleep deprived because the author wants her to be sleep deprived well, that's fine and she can go sleep somewhere right. else <laughs> you literally you take your shit and you go to another room where there is no creepy spirit in the closet Look. but she was like i just shut everything off it's gonna make more sense to me in the morning i'm just gonna <laughs> lay my head on down food network. She, she turned on all the lights in the food network and she put so it really loud sleep, so she could sleep do it why couldn't she just go sleep in another room? Mm. I mean, look. Where she hasn't taken pictures and seen, like, a I know. Spirit. If she has, like, an estate, I'm sure there's, like, more than one guest room in this house. Yeah, for sure. No, I'll be over at Raina's house is what I'm going to say here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I probably would. So then we enter her first trippy dream sequence. Yeah. Um, where she, like, somehow I was asleep, but the first time in ages my dreams weren't torture quite the opposite and she's in this like i guess 50s style is that when the prohibition was 
Twenties. Probably she was twenties. Yeah. So uh, she's in this twenties. She's a cabaret singer. Like she's in Chicago. Yeah, in Chicago. Right, yeah. Did it I say think. Chicago? It says that Eddie. It's on the speakeasy. It's a speakeasy most of Chicago. in Chicago. Yeah. So she's there and she's singing and you know that she's part of the mob a little bit and Eddie's like the uh, the kingpin. Yeah. Because uh, everyone's under his thumb, including her. Uh, including her, but. She's in love with someone else. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. And it's the piano player. <gasps> you know what I just thought of? Hmm. I wonder if like this book, part, partly like when they were publishing it, they were like hoping that it would do super well uh, beyond the New York Times bestseller list so that they could make it into a movie and I have think Hilary would, Duff singing. I kind of think it would be a cute movie. It wouldn't be the movie for me, personally. Yeah. I could see it being successful, but it probably would be a movie where I'd probably shake my head and be like, yeah. Because this reads like a movie. It does. You're right. It reads very much like a script. It would actually be nice if she had written a screenplay instead mm-hmm. and had it been a movie series. Yeah. I, I, I kind of agree with that. That would be awesome. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. What, what, the, the Leah? What's her Delilah? name? Delilah. Delilah. Or Delia. 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 Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Tatiana rolled her eyes so hard. <laughs> you guys are terrible with names. Like, both of you. That's why we're like, here. That's why, that's why you're here. That's why you're here. <laughs> that's why you're here, Tatiana. We need mm. you. So, um, her name is Delia, and um, there's a raid on the bar. Everyone runs away, and she meets up with her piano player. My piano player was already there. Mm-hmm. He really doesn't have a name. No, I don't think he does. Well, the piano player then um, calls her Olivia. Yes. And she slaps him in the face. Wait, no. No, just no she doesn't. I don't... Him calling her I'm, name I'm was kidding. a I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. Um, no. She does not she slap gets him in the face. I was kind of hoping she, she did. She gets upset what... that he uses a wrong name. He calls her by another woman's name. And he backpaddles. And then she asks, you know, if this is somebody, like, his wife or something. And he says, no, she's not. I told you what happened with her. It was just. And he can't find the words Mm -hmm. and tells her it was a long time ago. And she forgives him and tells him that if she ever sees that girl, she'll kill her. It's so corny. Yeah, for sure. He didn't answer. He gave me a melancholy smile, then placed his hand on my cheek and looked at me like he was memorizing my face. I got chills as he leaned closer and kissed me. Dot. There's so many ellipses in this book. Like yeah. the dot, dot, dot. Right. And like there's multiple times where it's three exclamation points and three question marks and stuff like that. And it feels very teenage. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just so you know, folks, uh, we got our Edward here. <laughs> Oh what? We got our Edward here. Oh, oh there you yeah. go. Edward has entered. Edward has arrived. Um with his melancholy smiles. Melancholy. 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 Yeah. You got this. So uh she wakes up hearing her screaming turkey basting directions from the food network on her TV. <laughs> Why do girls always fall for like the guys that are tortured? tortured it's souls. a young adult book. Don't do it, ladies. They're trying to save him. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to save him. No, thank you. But they don't realize that they're the ones that need saving. No, they don't. <gasps> According to the, her dream, Look. no one. she doesn't see the way that he sees her, and he just wishes he can open her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little dramatic. But So he's like, run away with me to Hollywood. Yeah. Like that. That's like the, the dream. For her. Oh, I also yeah. wrote, by the way, uh, that dream was more foreshadowing for folks starting to read. So mm. just pay attention to the foreshadowing. We really have to uh, find you a book that you haven't read yet. <laughs> I know we do. I know. So I'm she wakes soul. up to the Food Network and she like is like, okay, this is real life. And then she begins to think, thinking about the dream and the man in the dream. And she realizes it's the same man. The man in all of her photos. So she turns on the the computer, now zooming in on his eyes. I wish you could see yourself the way I see you, he had said in my dreams. And I looked deeper and deeper into those dark, magnetic pools, as if I could really see myself there, just as he imagined me. Until I burst out laughing. 
Yes, because, and this is why the book knows me so well, because mm. I was laughing at the end of that paragraph, and then she laughed, mm. you know? And I don't, I don't know how much of it is Hilary Duff or the writer when it comes to something yeah. like that, because um, I burst out laughing. What was wrong with me? Suddenly I become uh, Re- Rena. Raina. You got it, Raina. Whatever. One vivid dream, and I'm already living a fantasy. Because this person, that is what I thought, you know? And in, like, a corny... Well, this is corny. But, like, an even cornier romance novel, she would be harping on this the way her best friend would. Right. So I kind of liked that it's making fun of itself. Yeah, it does have a bit of self-parody sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if it's not even just like self-parody sometimes, if it's just being parody of the genre itself. But I don't know. If I don't think book... it's a parody of the genre itself because they're, it's a series. Well, I don't... Well, you know. But Twilight's a series, too. But like, I don't think it's a parody. That was, like, legitimate. No, what I'm saying is it's parodying, like, books. Like, just because it's a series doesn't mean it's not copying off tropes of, like, books just like it that's what i'm saying okay i see yeah. what you're saying but i don't feel that that's what this is i don't think it's be. smart enough to be that to be honest oh, that's yeah, what okay. i so i agree with you i don't think it's smart enough but i do agree with you that there are these little moments that i think are i don't know if it's trying to make fun of itself but it is attempting something mm-hmm. it'd be cool if it explored it more so i don't know but maybe you when picked makes, up i didn't pick up on it as much making fun of itself yeah so i yeah. don't know if you did like I think it, I think it's more just her rational the characters trying to rationalize with herself. Yeah, for sure. Um, because she also starts talking about like a phantom stalker, like that's not really like anything. Um, and she said, for starters, I have to take anything paranormal off the table. This is one area where I was more like mom. Dad may have been a scientist, but he loved to complicate things quote, beyond human understanding. And that's a phrase that's going to come up several times, beyond human understanding. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, a paragraph later, um, there was, quote, beyond human understanding, (laughs) um, is said again, and the images of my camera may have seemed impossible, but that's only because I haven't found the right information yet. And so that's what... So she's rationalizing everything, which I think is important. Um, we hear a little about Piri now. She Piri her. about her crazy Hungarian grandmother. <laughs> God. <laughs> which I, it feels very mean-spirited. I know the book's not trying to, but I was reading this and I'm like, damn, girl. I think it's very stereotypical. Agreed. That's what I, I found. Agreed, yeah. Um, and she talks about how... Uh, she doesn't like to spend a lot of time around Peary since her dad's death mm-hmm. because ironically it seems that Peary's actually taken the hardest out of taken this the hardest out of all of them um his disappearance yeah. and possible death so like um whenever she like touches anything of his she bows her head and her eyes well up with tears mm-hmm. and um yeah she says it makes her angry yes um which i guess i i get so she after all this she decides to call ben and they're going to meet at a place called Daltz. Mm-hmm. And so she takes a shower, a quick ass shower. She says she runs into the shower and 30 minutes later she was out the door. But I guess that's a little detail. That's just me. I couldn't shower that quickly. A lot of people I know shower a lot quicker than that. Really? Kevin's in and out of the shower and literally like well, he's a guy. five minutes. I could do it too, but I I like to relax in the shower. I was going to say, I could do it too, but I'd really have to like boom, boom, move it. Um, So... And then she says goodbye to Peary. Now she's leaving. Peary like appears like and <laughs> starts throwing. I first I thought I read this wrong. Yeah. She says tossing a small cup of water out, out after me, mm-hmm. so luck would flow like water in my direction. This is why I don't know anything about Hungarian traditions. So I like that one. <laughs> you like that one? I yeah. think it's kind of it made me laugh. That's for sure. But I was kind of like, Ugh, all right. I love that one. <laughs> I don't know why. I really dig it. You should do it more often then. Can you imagine <laughs> every time someone left the house, they just throw water? Yeah. Not <laughs> everyone somebody at the house, somebody you care about. Yeah. Well, what is it? So the luck may flow behind you or something? Yeah. yeah. So I'll like direction. it. I'll do it after Eva. Oh, that's, so, <laughs> that's cute. so cute. But when she's a little bit older, so she can understand how that is. <laughs> She'll be like, Mom, why are you throwing water at me? Well, I like that. And I like that you like it. 
I don't like I, the context. I didn't like the context because yeah. then the girl says madness. Yeah. Like, you grew up with Peary. Like, you know she has maybe these traditions. It, maybe it's like one of those, like, oh, madness. But then again, you she know, is. Roll, you know? Right, because she yeah. is a teenager. As much as the narration, you're shrugging. I agree with you. Yeah. But. You oh, know. please. I used to think my parents were crazy. Well, my whole family was crazy. Every time we would take a trip <laughs> before you leave the house for, like, to actually leave, like, you're mm-hmm. walking out the door. Everyone had to be in the house and sit down. Like, you have to sit down um, for good journey. Is that, like, a Russian tradition? I think it's a or Russian superstition. A... Interesting. See, this is what I mean. I don't know anything about Hungarian superstition. Mm-hmm. So it's that like, might be real for The her. phrase that goes along with that basically translates roughly to, like, to a good journey. So you, like, mm-hmm. you sit down, you take a couple of minutes, like, not minutes. You take... It's very Middle Earth, and I love it. <laughs> you, just, you sit down and you take, like, a moment that, you know... To okay. collect yourself, yeah. Yeah, before you get on the road. That's so actually kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, like, I like that, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like when things are explained and thought of. Yeah. Instead of just calling the person mad because she threw water at. Yeah. My daughter probably thinks I'm mad because we're <laughs> teaching her currently she can't whistle anywhere there's a roof above her head. That's also another um, superstition. You hmm. shouldn't whistle somewhere that has a roof. And it was funny because we were in the car and she was whistling. And I'm like, Eva, you know better than that. This was like literally yesterday. And she goes, oh, because I'm going to lose money. And I'm like, no, you kind of have the correct idea, but you're misunderstanding the superstition. What is this? I'm assuming my parents probably gave her some of it and she misunderstood. So the superstition is if you whistle and there's a roof above your head, whatever place you're in will lose money. So like, for example, if you're in a house and you're whistling, the household will lose money. Not necessarily Hmm, you, you. but the house. So let's say things will start breaking down. You might not have money for repairs. Like, yeah. things will not be at optimum because yeah. the whatever you're whistling under hmm. is going to be affected negatively. So she was yeah. whistling my car, and I said to her, I'm like, there's still a roof between you and the sky. So the car will be affected, for example. Maybe it'll start breaking down. Maybe what are I'll... the roots of that? I don't know. So you're not supposed to, like, a Russian superstition. You can't whistle in somewhere that has a roof above you if you're mm. there's just nothing but the sky go for it but if there's a roof you mm. shouldn't whistle inside a building there's or inside yeah. an enclosed space there's a story i forget what it's called but i've read it very fairly recently and it's about this object that you can wish upon you get three wishes and it, that's it, called it reminded, aladdin's lamp <laughs> no 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 it's not aladdin's <laughs> lamp it's a totally different it's like a horror story um and these guys, like, they wish, oh, I want, uh, what is it? I want to be rich. Like, it's mm-hmm. a, two parents and their son. He's older, um, an adult working and everything. So they're like, all right, let's wish that we'll be rich. And they wish it. And the next day, they end up getting rich because their son died at work and they're getting oh, paid. Like, um, yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes me kind of think of that. It's not exactly the same, but that's what I thought of when you were talking about it. Hmm. I forget what it's called. But anyway, so after she leaves... It says, I turned up the radio and sang loud and off key as I hit the highway. And I wrote, insert Hillary Duff joke here. I rolled my eyes at the car she's driving. Oh, please, please go in. Because it. that is like the twilight. Because she's real and edgy. Well, That's it's why. like the, tw- uh, um, she, um, Bella had a Ford, no, a Chevy pickup truck that was right. beat down. Mm-hmm. She has a beat down mint green Ford Bronco. Yeah. Um, that, that often fell apart on me. I bought it myself, saving up my earnings until I can afford the ancient beauty. If she, like, that car is probably, what, two grand most? Yeah. So, I think, like, if she's going all these extravagant gifts, has the parents that she has, has the home that she has... I would think that her allowance would be a little bit more than <laughs> to afford this. True. Personally, I just look the lot like how my mind work, and also every shiny rental I drove while I travel reminded me of how much I adored my own car. Yeah, love your own car. That's fine. I don't think she like living the life she, she Brittany, had. I don't think she would pick this car. Brittany, she's real. Personally, she's real. She's down to earth. She's approachable. <laughs> <laughs> you, have have, you have to have something that poor girls have to relate to. Yeah. See, she's not all about the money. I would have 
been fine of her driving like a Honda, like yeah. a Honda Accord. But that's no, not but edgy. That's not edgy enough. It's not creative enough. I'm not creative enough. No, that's but a that... mint green paint job for Bronco. I say that with sarcasm. I know. But if she wants to be normal, She's if she wants normal. to be approachable, you're driving a stick shift. Yeah. <laughs> like a beetle. Give her a beetle. Oh, that would be awesome. Like that that's that's a normal that card. That's fit. quirky and it's not like richy. It's not like a like a fucking Rolls Royce or anything like that. Like it's not her. a Mercedes. Yeah. It's still a German car. Mm -hmm. So that's it's foreign. Yeah. And it's not conspicuous when they go to Delta's diner. You know, well, or Delts Diner, where yeah. they put spaghetti on the grill. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I will say, so you just made me think of something. There is a book that um, I would recommend everybody read, even though the ending is super, super sad. But it's um, called Bonjour Tristesse. It okay. means hello, sadness, translated from the French. From hello, French. Go on. Sad. That's what I thought of too. <laughs> and um, it's about a teenager. Uh, I'd say around Cleo's age, maybe a little younger. And what you when you were going over the car and stuff, like it made me think of this character from that book mm -hmm. and thinking, wow, that is a really well written character. So if you're looking for like a well written like teenage girl who is very much not a photographer and stuff, but very much kind of shallow, if that's the right word, like in the way it's I mean, <laughs> yeah, th not that it's a bad thing. I think it's really interesting to explore a teenage girl and her feelings being a teenage girl. Mm hmm. That book does it really well. Yeah. I would totally recommend that, folks, Like, if you want to read that, because mm. it's such a good book, and it's written in a way that often comes off in YA books as shallow. It's written with so much depth mm -hmm. and actually gives teenage girls some kind of authority. Yeah. Like, unlike this book. But anyway, um, continue. I apologize. So they meet um, Ben at this diner, and that's we find out that he lives on campus at Connecticut College because he's an adjunct professor as well. Mm, that is a busy 20 year old. <laughs> Seriously. And, well, when does he have time to bodyguard? <laughs> so he knew all, he knows all the, the local haunts um, and so they meet up quite often to play, what was it? Cribbage. Cribbage. But she's also wearing sunglasses and a baseball cap. Yeah. Uh, so she's not conspicuous driving a, a mink green Ford Bronco. Yeah. Is cribbage a real game? Does anybody know? Yes, cribbage is a real game. Okay, thank God. Because I was going to say, please tell me it's a real game. I kind of want to play it. It sounds fun. Yeah, cribbage is definitely real. What is it? Like, I didn't get a, an idea of what it's really about. It's like... I, I, think it's, I think it's a British game. Okay. I Don't quote me on that, because I might be thinking cricket. But... No, um, they're both. Well, cricket is... Yeah, they're both are... Yeah. Well, that's it's. It, I think cribbage is the one with the long board, and there's pegs, and you're playing cards with it, and your cards determine your moves on your peg board. Okay, interesting. So yeah. I th I believe that's. Ask I think. Hey Google. I know. Well, I'm glad it's a real game. It is because a real game. when I read it, I'm like, please tell me this is not like this is a real game and not made up. Because if it is, like, mm -hmm. I thought of Quidditch, like, because cribbage, like, and, cribbage. and I was like, please tell me she didn't make that up because that was an awful title. If she made that up, but it's not. It's <laughs> real. That makes me feel better. Yeah, I can sleep at night. Hundred percent real. Okay. So uh, we learned that this is an important game between the two of them. Uh, ben was really into the game, and he got her into it. So they they often play with um. Uh, for for keeps like quarters yeah. a quarter a game and twice a year they um pay it out yeah. so on her birthday and on his birthday yeah. so um we find out that she is a pseudonym she yes. has a pseudonym and uh, Alyssa yes did I say that right I think so I mean unless Our... it's Alisa but I think it's Alyssa name expert yeah A L I S S A Tatiana. You're the name expert. A L I S S A. Alyssa. Okay, so okay, we were okay. right, Alyssa. So um... <laughs> the one time we're right, she didn't congratulate I know, us. Really? Congratulations, you got a name right. <laughs> <laughs> it's in English. <laughs> yeah. <right>. Look, <laughs> we, we need the support. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, I think I think this is actually kind of cool that she has a pseudonym that, mm -hmm. because I could see that happening. People submit because they know who you are and being like, yeah, we're not going to accept these. Also, um, if they're very good at it, they would realize that they're submitting the same photo. Right. 
you know. Yeah. Uh, but her name is Alyssa Grande, which means... Yeah. <laughs> I forget. It's... I'm laughing, but I forget. Um, something big, or... She told me. Gra- truth big? Alyssa means truth, yeah, truth large. Truth large. So... Uh, the name itself was a lie in its support of a greater truth, an honest opinion of my skills. So, what's her name? Uh, Reina came up with that, that her name is Alyssa Grande. I thought of Ariana Grande, and I looked that Same. up, and I forget what Ariana means, but it didn't make me laugh as much as I hoped it would. So, <laughs> it's fine. Um, this is another part where, so, we talk about all the things that Ben has to do. And so um, here's another thing that him and both Reina do. While she was in Europe with Reina and Ben, they had manned Alyssa Grande's email, voicemail, and P.O. box for her. And I wrote down, do you have perfect friends who have nothing better to do? Because I wish, only wish that I had friends who would drop everything to do, like, my bidding for me. Yeah, really. Like, give me a break. Uh, But good for you. kind of, because... Like, he's her bodyguard. Well, that's true. I could so, see, yeah. But also, that's secretarial work, so I don't know why he's doing her secretarial work. Unless there's more to it. But also, Reyna has nothing else to do. I guess she you doesn't, know, yeah. like, th- that her whole purpose is to be the best friend. Right. You know, she talks about how true. she loves the life of the, being the best friend. True. She loves meeting all the people. She loves talking about how it's like to be uh, Clea's, or Clea's best friend she's a socialite right and so when Clea's like hey can you man my fan mail essentially any money she's all over that right true very true um but just i do think that is very extravagant for yeah to be asking a friend to do for sure um so then ben talks about um going to carnival in rio yes and so she's ecstatic she really wants to go and this as uh, uh Ariana Grande as Alyssa Grande, like so. Right. Yeah, it was a job order that came through for her photography name. Gone. Yes, and it's this is where we actually get her age around this part. Oh yeah, so it's a little further after that on my page sixty nine. Mm-hmm. Ben says, "Think she'll meaning the mom sign the paper." Ben asked as I pulled out my cell phone and dialed. Since my eighteenth birthday was still a couple of months. <laughs> away i needed a notarized permission letter from my mother each time i traveled outside the country so we get is an age true? confirmation i was wondering that too i never traveled when i was under 18 meet hey tatiana si, senora. uh did you when you said you traveled outside the u.s without mm-hmm. your parents did mm-hmm. you ever did they have to sign a form for you to travel if you yeah. were by yourself yeah okay okay so we just wanted to confirm we didn't know if that was true or not Mm -hmm. so it sounds realistic honestly but i just wasn't sure um so and she wanted to go to brazil anyway because that's where her father disappeared so uh, she starts going into her dad and his disappearance and where he was last seen he was uh, last seen in a camp outside of rio globo something reach it's a global globo ranch or global reach reach global reach yeah and you know, she's kind of speculating, you know, what could have happened? Had there been drama or violence? Um, and then she talks about how he had gone off alone on a few occasions and he wouldn't let anybody know where he was going. Yeah. That's weird. Does yeah. anyone think that's weird? I do. Especially in the location. Yes, that's very weird. I'm going to go overseas by myself, but no one will know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm sure they explain it later on because I'm predicting kind of what it's going to happen he's looking for most likely for the fountain of youth um and so he doesn't want people to know where he's searching for it um but also but you should probably let your family know where you're going and if you're going to be out of reach and for how long right agreed um so is that the reason he started this whole um foundation so he has a reason to go to these foreign countries and search for things I mean, at this point, we really don't know. Yeah. I don't... And I don't remember, to be honest, yeah. so... It's, it's very Tomb Raider-ish. Kind of is, actually, except Tomb Raider is so much more fun. Yeah? So much more it fun. is. And because her... Well, she's just getting started. She was, I know, yeah. Oh, Lara yeah, Croft she's... started off kind of, like, slow, too. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, with Lara Croft, they were oh, rich. I'm getting excited, stop it. They <laughs> were so rich. And wasn't her father a professor? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. An and explorer. An explorer. An explorer. Archaeologist. <laughs> archaeologist. And you find out that he's also an archaeologist, her father. Yeah. So he's an archaeologist, a heart surgeon, a scientist. And a, spe- uh, and a skeptic, if you would call it that. Like, meaning he believes in otherworldly oh, things. Oh, skeptics don't believe it. Okay, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, other way around. Um, what would you call that? I don't know. Okay, spiritualist. I don't know. Spiritualist, yeah, yeah. sure. But okay. skeptics are skeptical right. of it existing. Who was it? It was my dad, actually. We were talking about the meaning of skeptic. And I told him, he was like, yeah, skeptics, they, uh... Oh, yeah, a ghost. So, you know that show Ghost Hunters? I love Ghost Hunters. Is that that's the one with Zach, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, I I hate that show, but I love it at the same time because so every bad. time he sees a ghost, he's like, "Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh my god, oh my god a fucking touch yeah. me!" <laughs> well, they got a skeptic on who did not be- like they didn't know what they believed. Yeah. So they, I forget what happened, but it was something like where they were like, "Well, I believe in ghosts." Mm-hmm. So I said to my dad, I was like, "Well, then they're not a skeptic because he just said he believed in ghosts." Yeah. And my dad was like, well, he's skeptical. And I was like, well, if he's skeptical, then he doesn't know what he believes because yeah. he's skeptical. And we actually had an argument about it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, look, I, I don't care. I don't watch the show. Yeah. Like, but they typically they, skeptics don't they're they're skeptical if it exists. Right. So not yeah. skeptical. It doesn't not exist. I just thought the you show know. was because the show outright said he was a skeptic. And I was like, well, that's kind of miss." representing yeah. a skeptic because that's really not what it is correct anyway <laughs> so so uh her father disappears on these um trips quite often so yeah. uh mm-hmm. she wants to go down there for a uh, carnival i think they say it that is way is that how you yeah because yeah. i was wondering yeah um but i laughed at the three exclamation points and the capital yes where Oh yeah. oh, yeah. My jaw dropped. Are you kidding me? Yes! <laughs> I can picture that being like a montage. Like, you know, have you seen Anchorman? Where they go to get new suits and they all jump up in the air and go, yeah. yes! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's just... it's. I think that's just bad writing. I, I, I agree. It is... It's. I won't even say it's bad writing. It's just clunky. Which, yeah. in turn, is bad. But, like, because you don't need to add all this extra stuff... Yeah, isn't like that's bad form though too, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, no, I agree. It is okay. bad form. It's it's trying to compensate for what it is clearly lacking, and it doesn't need to do that. If yeah. you you can you can write an excited. Maybe don't just say if if you want your character to be excited mm-hmm. and to do something, you know, just so excited about what's about to happen to her. Don't just say yes. Like maybe explain why she's so excited. Yeah. Like in a quick way like yeah. you don't need to go into a whole paragraph like we get yes it. Um, as as yes she's i said as excited as a child receiving her first bike on christmas right yeah or you something know. like that at least um just do something yeah but i agree the form it's not very good. so we find out that her dad is just like ben <laughs> yeah he does absolutely everything he goes and visits his old patients he counsels other doctors he serves maybe ben is his secret love child i think <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. Which would be weird because uh, be she weird. is oogling his ass. Got the hots for him. Um, <laughs> that's because she barely ever gets it on with anybody. That's true. 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 Uh, so he just. I thought you Wait, were what? farting. <laughs> that, no. that is so funny. Oh. I I had a <laughs> comment like and then I had to like literally force it back inside Wait, my throat. Say what was it. a comment? Go no, ahead. And completely inappropriate. Oh well, then don't say <laughs> it. Actually, like so inappropriate. I can't even. Uh, so you sen- actually censored yourself. Um, so then he was only gone for four months and they buried a casket for okay, him. That's why I'm confused. I wasn't sure because at one point, and correct me if I'm wrong, I thought at one point in this book it says it had been like it was four months when they confirmed he was dead. But now it's been a year. Yeah, it's been a year since he disappeared. So four months. They So it's been what? It's been... T- nine it's been nine months since his casket was buried okay yeah i think that's how it goes so that's yeah that's that's not a lot of time no I but was, and also people but, well, i was irritated because i listen to a lot of true crime stuff and there are people who fight and search for their missing loved ones for years and, years and years and years and years and years until they finally get some little piece of closure yeah now these people and they're just the average person 
these people are incredibly wealthy and they are well connected right. and they gave up after four months. I agree with that. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, because I the book tries to explain it away by explaining that her mom kind of caves into herself, doesn't really talk about it, and then uh, what Clea's that just more a child. passionate though. That's what I mean. I feel like she's a politician too. Yeah. She knows essentially how to talk to people and get her way. Yeah, um, but people grieve differently. I just feel like well, right, yeah. I just feel like that was an incredibly short amount of time, in my opinion. No, I agree with you, and I I kind of, but you know what? It's again the book doesn't want to take it that way it doesn't want to make it easy and that it doesn't like it wants i keep wanting to say reina for some reason wants clea clea to go on the journey Mm -hmm. um so that's why it It makes sense yeah narrative economy narrative economy that's what i thought while i was reading this was narrative economy and to clarify by the way narrative economy is not always a bad thing yeah i just want to make that clear you looked like you want to say something no i just finished the chapters oh good how, what do you okay you can tell us what we i'm very think. concerned but okay you're concerned oh okay Ooh. <clears throat> okay so um she calls her mom mm-hmm. to talk about um going over so she left a message before she started playing cribbage with ben basically saying i want to go to rio and her mom <laughs> has a, like a literally a four second conversation with her yeah uh Shalom, isn't it the middle of the night in Israel? I don't think it's a good idea, Clea. Uh, it's a legitimate assignment, one you're hired for or one you'll actually do. I'll absolutely do my job. We'll talk later. Love you. <laughs> Done. Gone. Yeah. That was the quickest what conversation. What was the point of that? Yeah. We didn't need that at all. That could have easily been taken out because eventually we get another conversation. Well, not a conversation, yeah. a letter, but... Um, I feel like it should have been longer. Longer well, or... She was obviously at a party or something. Yeah. She couldn't, but she wanted to get back to her and just... That's true. You know, it's all her I... that she doesn't think it's a great idea. I think... Um... It doesn't sound yeah. like she's super against it. She no, just wanted no. to, like, clarify. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think for the sake of the narrative, I think it would have been a little stronger if it either had gone on longer and just made a decision. Yeah. Like, instead of kind of leaving yes. us hanging, like, for some odd reason, like, why do you need to... Oh, like, because I think they're trying to capitalize on her little rebellious spirit. Well, she didn't say no. Well, I think it's it's all... it's that Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's, it's that, uh, and it's moms also... Moms don't make their decisions that quickly, people. Maybe she's far away. Well, she Maybe didn't. she just wanted to clarify that it was an actual assignment, and Clea would actually do it. It's not the, that she's not going there just for the sake of investigating what happened to yeah. her dad yeah. and then she hung up because she was at a party she couldn't keep talking and she probably just needed a little more time to think yeah but clea probably knows her mom better that's why she was like she didn't say no yeah. <laughs> right she discusses i forget what where it was that i read this but she discusses you the read fact... that so quick though i was you like did. i was really that was really cool how quick you read the couple wow. chapters um she mentions at one point that for her mom has shot the door to Rio. Like, her mom... And it's crazy, by the oh, way. Yeah. I will I will say something where it's like he disappeared and four months later they um, pronounced him dead. dead. Yeah, we we had that. Which, yeah. by the way, I'm pretty sure you can't do it that quick. Yeah, I, did, I, think, that's, body, I think it's a couple years. Without a body, it? I believe that there is like a specific amount of years you have to yeah. wait and you have to, like, keep hassling the government for it. Mm-hmm. But, like, really, it's not that easy to pronounce someone dead, especially yeah. without a body or any way to prove that that person died. Like, mm-hmm. if there's, like, a let's say a building went down and there was an explosion and, you know, for a fact that person was in there, that's a little going to be easier to say, okay, well, this person yeah. obviously died. But right. this guy just wandered off in Rio mm-hmm. and there's no proof that he ever died. And four months later, he's pronounced dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what? I agree. Yeah. yeah. But... Anyway, so in that, in that, in that, whatever that, wherever that is, because I don't remember where it was, yeah. she also mentions that her mom went pretty quickly, or not pretty quickly, but her mom went from like trying to spend money and influence to find out what happened to hoping that, you know, s- something will be yes. resolved mm-hmm. to just the only way she can survive what happened is to just shut the door on it. Mm-hmm. So basically her mom shut the door and moved on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And was kind of like hoping that Clea is in the same place and Clea is like, well, she doesn't seem to understand. I never left there. So yes. basically the door was shut before she kind of went through, through it. it. So yeah. she's there, um, which is probably the reason why she resents Piri. 
Yeah. For being able to openly mourn Mm -hmm. when she can because her mom has basically decided they're both moving on. Mm -hmm. Um, But that being said, then, it kind of could explain the reason why her mom isn't so harassing yeah. her about yeah. not doing this because maybe since she's moved on and she did her little quick phone call you know Kalia's like yeah this i will do my job like this is a legit job assignment you know yeah her mom's like not thinking oh okay well she's still stuck on this so yeah this can't she's necess- moved on this, i might not necessarily agree yeah. with this but like okay mm-hmm. like it's not terrible so there's no reason to keep like yeah. having this conversation Granted, I still think it's weird that there was no follow-up conversation yeah. without a huge party going on in the background. Mm-hmm. But maybe Clea is like, all right, well, mom's busy. She's not calling. So we're just going to, you know, go see what happens. Can I just say real quick that the way the you just hope said of that. hope a 17-year-old. <laughs> the way you just said that was very eloquent. I liked that a lot better than what we got. Yeah, because you don't see it. I think you it. said it very well. Thank you. We wish it like, was said in the book. Yeah, because that is perfect like yeah i think that would have actually been nice to see that because the like yeah. well sorry go ahead no i was also going to bring up the point about pronouncing people dead didn't take it forever to pronounce people dead from 9 11 yeah it took them forever yeah. it takes a long time now i wonder if maybe the reason it didn't take long is because they're an influential family but it just seems four months there's no yeah. way that's legal well yeah. also like if, 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 it, if it were <laughs> What if people do before Google? I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> Can we actually speak to other Google? people? Um, yeah. Oh, I wonder if the search is going to come back and bite me in the ass. Oh, God. How long before <laughs> I'm missing? Is Person legally... is presumed dead? Yes. Not a presumed dead, but... Pronounced dead. Pronounced, pronounced dead. dead. So I'm going to... But, um... Oh, declared death in, absence... in absentia. If, um, if it was because of her Seven political... years. Seven years. If it was because of her mom's influence, political influence, it should have said, "Right, my mom had him pronounced dead, pulling strings." And that's one but sentence. That, yeah, and but that would cause so much resentment from her daughter. Right, that would go, that would, that would be... cause so much good drama. See, okay, see, that's why I love doing this podcast because I love looking at a narrative and trying to figure out where it could be improved and how to do it. And mm-hmm. like, I love the conversation we just had because. What you just said is awesome. That is perfect tension. That could be like a side plot that doesn't need to be this weird and fabricated now one. Explain why they don't really talk right. and why no one cares about who's moving where. Oh, that would be really great. Yeah. Oh, so in, if anyone cares a little bit more about preparing, <laughs> we do. No, because do. this is bugging yeah. me. The four months. I mean, yeah. it's not really fair. Like whatever. Mm-hmm. So there's several criteria um, evaluated to determine whether a person may be declared legally dead. Their party normally must be missing from their home or usual residence for an extended period of time, most commonly seven years. Mm -hmm. Their absence must be continuous and inexplicable. Mm -hmm. Like the person didn't just, you know, move away and found a new job. Or run away. There must be no communication from the party with those people most likely to hear from them. Mm. And there must have been a diligent but unsuccessful search for the person and or diligent but unsuccessful inquiry into their whereabouts. That one they did do. But either way... Four months doesn't even come yeah. close to the u- usual, most yeah. common seven years of the code here. All right. So here's my other data- dated reference. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I don't think this exists anymore, but correct me if I'm wrong. She says um, she. Uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. She TVO'd sh- or she had TVO'd shows missing. And at first I was like, what is that word? And I was like, oh, TVO'd. That doesn't. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a thing anymore, is it? It does exist, it is. but yeah, it is very bad. Anymore. Is yeah. it okay? You don't need to because you got DVR, right? Mm-hmm. But that used to be so popular. Like I remember, I would watch like celebrities. It wasn't like that long ago, though. So, I know. Well, that it was around this time, though. Two thousand and ten. Yeah. yeah. So that made me laugh, actually. And it's not going to exist in ten years when someone else no. picks up this book. Yeah. So interesting. Okay, so she went back to Raina's house because she didn't want to. St- Go back home. There you go, Tatiana. Um, so Just they eat some popcorn and watch TV. Yep. And then uh, she went home and fell asleep. Uh, and then she had an, uh, her second trippy dream. Oh right, yeah. Um, where she is another singer, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's like three knocks. So you're you're getting the feeling of this. Um, 
what this forbidden love between the two people because he has a, a specific knock he does for her and she opens the door and they have this like coupling that um we've I don't seen think it's before forbidden. well you get this feeling because the first time yeah. he was a piano oh. player that he couldn't be with her and now this time they have a secret knock you know so it's it signals that it's him you know so it's kind of a, like a, a dance mm-hmm. you know um, so it could be construed as like Definitely some kind of serious and seductive. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, He's got almost as good of a seduction game as Reina. Oh, Ooh, yeah, he's <laughs> the this best is better. <laughs> this one I laughed at. Um, he said, "What took you so long?" I was worried. Uh, I wheeled in my my seat, primmed to snap, but he was smiling. I relaxed and laughed. He was teasing me. I always said he worried about me far too much, and it would be the death of me. So here he was, playing it up on purpose. You're so bad, I said. That made me laugh. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, Mm. cool? Maybe? I don't get it. Look, it's chemistry, Brittany. It's chemistry. Mm. I'm not saying it's good chemistry. Well, well, then we find out that she is playing uh, Ophelia Ophelia in Hamlet. Yes. Um, and he says that she was great. Hamlet has never had a better Ophelia. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, thank you. Uh, she also kidding. said, I don't think you're qualified right. to make that statement. She I rolls her like, eyes. Yes, I am. Wink. Because <laughs> I've been Wink. around forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you get that feeling? Yeah, I did, because he's Edward. <laughs> he is. That's what, well, yeah, we'll get to that. I would love for him to be an actual vampire. So we find out that she has a different name in this dream. Annaline. Wait. Did they already go over Ben showing her all the stuff? No. Oh, okay, now. So, um, this is a dream where she's Annaline, an actress who plays Ophelia. Mm-hmm. Annaline, thank Annaline. you. <laughs> I thought you were looking at my book. <laughs> it's okay to correct us. Yeah. I can't read. You know this. <laughs> so she's in this dream, and um, at, she we find out her name is Adeline, right? Yes, Adeline. Or Anna, Annaline, right? Is it Annaline or Annaline now? Annaline. Annaline. It looks like okay. Annaline. <laughs> you think it's Annaline? I don't know what I think it it's is. Annaline. Annaline. Okay. So, um, I really like I really like the dream sequences okay. in this book so far because uh, we had the one with her, the nightmare, um, then the first romantic. This is the second romantic one, um, and I like the description in, in, as well. Um, She's crying out of gratitude from the day we met. It's like you could see into my heart, crack it open and pull out, uh, pull open the wounds, inspect them and dig out every bit of infection, then fill them with the love until they were healed. I like stuff like that uh, because it's speaking more metaphorically than a lot of what this book has been doing, which is like listing things. So I, I appreciate the more ro- like the more descriptive feels of it. Um, and then he gets her irises. Yes. Mm-hmm. Go and, ahead. Well, I was just going to say, he gives her flowers, or he sees flowers on her dressing room table, roses and irises, but then she says, like, expects he sent them, but then he says, I didn't send you those. Mm-hmm. And it says, the note says, from your biggest fan. And, um, I don't think we ever get... Oh, yeah, then he cuts his hand on the thorns of the roses. Mm-hmm. And he starts to bleed, and so she gets something to mop up the blood, and then all of a sudden, <gasps> it's gone. Mm-hmm. His hand is perfectly fine. I like how it's they're introducing <laughs> like yeah. a third person in their yes. in their love story. Yes, that might not necessarily be a good. Mm-hmm. I picked up. I, I picked up yeah. on that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was. I like that. Oh, I agree. By the way, dun dun dun. All right, oh lord, sorry. what? I, oh, dun, I dun, see. Dun. I see what. What was there. the dun dun dun? The um, four when um when his hand was cut, but then she looks and it's not cut anymore. Ah. how did it happen? <gasps> okay, but it's you're right. Dream. It's a dream. <laughs> but she doesn't know. Have, can I just ask real quick, not to go on a tangent, just one word answers? Have you ever been in a dream and you know you're in a dream? Yes. Yes. All the time. I think that only happened to me once. That's and I don't it. think that his hand wasn't cut because she realized it's a dream. Oh, I know. He's yeah, I know. trying to stop her from looking at his hand. And no, I know. Yeah. And he excuse it away. Right. And I think it's because he healed really, really quickly. Because mm-hmm. he is Edward. Mm-hmm. Edward. So true. Almost a vampire who can't die and has lived forever. Yes. All right. 
So in this dream, um, he proposes to her. Indeed, yeah. And she says, yes, of course. And she saw their entire lives oh. spilling forward and how happy they were together. Mm-hmm. And she woke up and breathless and dizzy. Yes, indeed. And so... Uh, <laughs> and she falls out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep, and Peary like is like right there. Yes. <laughs> How close is Peary to all of this? <laughs> she like slams open the door like immediately. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Peary's up on it. She knows what's going on. So, uh, he was just cleaning the banister. Jesus, Someone's in the middle gotta of the it. night. No, is it's it the morning. middle of the night? No, she went to. Is it the morning? I spun in the dark and no, wasn't That's true. She might be away cleaning. She probably is. And then it, it says... I just found it really funny. Yeah. It says, Peary nodded when she says, like, no, it's okay, Peary, I'm fine. And it says, Peary nodded, then shut the door. Before it closed all the way, I saw her gaze at Dad's office door and cross herself. I rolled my eyes. And I'm like, damn, this bitch has no respect for Peary. Yeah. Like, it's so well, mean. Well, no, it's not respect. She just doesn't get her superstitions. Just Especially because she said, oh, someone's walking your, over your grave. Wear your clothes inside out today. Oh, right. Turn your luck around. Yeah, we had yeah. that, too. Did you? Mm-hmm. I never did that, <laughs> but it's definitely super. Like that's a well-known superstition. I didn't. I never heard that one. I don't have patience for superstitions. When you are, um, when you like have a shiver come through you, yeah, that's also like supposedly someone walking over a grave. I have a lot of shivers. Same here. Lots of shivers too, and they're creepy. Out. This. I don't know if this is a superstition, but there's one where like if you find a penny heads up, that means that somebody dropped it from heaven. No, I it's just someone dropped a goddamn ever. penny. Pick it up. Well, I agree. Without a hundred pennies. <laughs> <laughs> and he Jesus went, Christ. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she goes on to her computer. Yes. Um, debating whether or not she wanted to see the, the pictures again. And what she would want to say to Raina and uh, Ben. So she thinks about telling them again. Um, and talking about her dreams and the stranger and how... Reina would be like, oh, just have fun in your dreams. It's right, okay. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Also, like, I, I don't know. I think that's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's very quirky. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's more than that. If she shows her the pictures of this guy being in all these pictures of with, with them, yeah, that's, that's why I'm, I'm getting yeah. so confused about that because she hasn't told anyone about the pictures. So she knows well, what their reactions might be, and it's not necessarily positive. Mm-hmm. Come on, it's freaking creepy. Even if for some yeah. reason she's behaving like it's okay now, it doesn't mean that her friends will feel the same way. I think mm-hmm. the book is trying to play it off like she's trying to keep it her own and like keep it belonging to her. But I I still think that it is kind of weird that she wouldn't like this is freaky to me because she knows that it's not normal. Right? If I even if like even if I saw something like this right now and I explained it away to myself, like, oh, it's not so bad. This isn't threatening. I'm having these dreams. Everything's kind of nice. I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable showing it to somebody because once you show it to someone who's not yeah. having your feelings, right. all they'll see is hard facts. And the hard facts are all these crazy pictures and there's like a weird guy in them, including your closet, but it's not for real. Right. That doesn't come off like a good thing. Right. Right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So um, she explains how she was. She cycles through these four different people as she's sleeping, mm-hmm. whether it be um... Annaline, right? Annaline, mm-hmm. Annaline, Delia. Catherine, Olivia, and Delia. Yeah. De- 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 Delia. 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 Thank you. And uh, she hated these dreams at at first because she had no control over them. And there's always this guy. And sometimes there was. Uh, Giovanni, who, like, in other dreams, um, she lived in rural England. She was a Renaissance water ca- uh, painter in Italy. And she, she was in Chicago in the Prohibition era. She was all over the place. Mm. And she was frustrated. But she became accustomed to these dreams. And she started to look forward to them. Because mm-hmm. she was falling for this dream guy. And I wrote, so this book... I'm not positive about this, but a prediction. This book is the four stages of Twilight. We are now in New Moon. Because the reason oh. I said that is because in New Moon, after Edward leaves her, yes. she craves these moments when she's taking risks because then she sees him. Mm-hmm. And so kind of Visions like of Clea. Him. Yeah, exactly. Clea is craving these dreams. She wants to sleep now so that she can be in these dreams that she loves. Mm-hmm. So like, another kind of Twilight connection. 
Yeah, that I thought was interesting. And uh, she starts daydreaming about it, but didn't hold the same weight. And her friends are beginning to notice. This is going on for a couple weeks. Yeah. Now. Um, so Rena is like, oh, it must be Ben. I did interrupt in something when he spilled coffee all of himself weeks ago. Mm-hmm. No, it's not Ben. Um, and she tells her about the dreams. Right, yeah. It's not about the pictures. Correct. And um, they agree that she needs a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need a boyfriend, girl. Mm-hmm. Um, so then she talks after she explains it to Raina, then she sees Ben three days later, um, mm-hmm. and she tells him, well, I don't know if she tells him right away. Let me well, did you, um, did I skip over something? Uh, just a little quick thing that you pointed out before, mm-hmm. uh, and then bringing up, she talks about how this, he, he is the dream guy. He even has a tattoo of a lily in the middle of his chest. <laughs> Uh, which is a nice touch, tying him with my father and how horribly I missed him. Feud would have a field day with this. Freud, sorry. Oh, Freud right. that's, have... you mentioned that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that. So it's 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 funny because, again, the book is making fun of itself. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to point that out yeah. because then three d- days later, she's with Ben. Yeah. On their way to talk about Rio, I guess? I get, well, I know they're playing cribbage again, I believe. Um because I wrote mm. down here, Cribbage sounds like Quidditch when I still wasn't sure if it was a real game. <laughs> um, so um, while they're playing this game, um, she talks about the pitcher, actually. She she tells Ben. Yeah, she tells him. Ben yeah. was the first person she told about these pitchers, knowing that he's going to think that she's crazy. Um, and he gets a look on his face with a furred brow and concerned looks. And um, she goes... And can you please stop looking at me like that? I know there's a logical explanation. I just don't know what it is yet. But and Ben interrupts her, uh, demand, wanting to see the pictures, and uh, he has some explaining to do for her, like to her. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Yeah. Sorry. So that's the end of chapter three. We are back at their house, and uh, Ben is kind of just going str- like he is on a mission right now his bodyguard instincts are going like hardcore and they go to her bedroom and she starts showing him the pictures yeah and um i don't know if you have anything to say about this part uh, she's very possessive over her computer mm-hmm. um and then he's he's look he's looking at this thing and she is feeling like her heart is racing. She is feeling those same same uh, feelings that Bella had with Edward. Like the excitement, just the idea. That's to right. See, yeah. Just the idea to see these the pictures of this dream guy. Um. And so he says to her that um, I need to show you something downstairs, and he starts going toward the dad's studio, not her- office. Studio. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes, there that's, is a difference. I was very confused because I, like you just said, like I didn't realize it said studio. I just kind of assumed office mm-hmm. or that they were one and the same. And I read that. I'm like, didn't we just go in there? But mm-hmm. okay, cool. That's now, nice in the studio, no one has touched. Okay, cool. Not a single person has touched the studio, which is why Clea is very um, upset that Ben is like, we have to go in. Right. We have to go in there now. Mm-hmm. And she explains how the studio is different from his office, where the, his studio is where he was actually even more creative than his messy office. Mm. And no one is allowed to Why go in there. Why does this guy have time to do all this stuff? And be a world-renowned heart surgeon. Don't forget. Yeah, don't don't forget <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I mean, surgeons are usually, like, really busy. Yeah, they right, are. yeah. They're very busy. Not this one. Um, it's important, like, to recognize also here, just for the future of this book, but that there's two different stories going on. Yeah, the two storylines are one, what happened to her father, and the other is this person in her pictures. Just an important little thing because that's actually um, stylistically, I'm not going to say it works well, but it's actually cool to see how she's taking mm-hmm. two different plots and kind of converging them together. Yeah, I like that type of thing. Yeah. So just something to like pay attention to as we keep going with the book. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is where... We dive into his more creative side. Um, he got really into Shakespeare right before he went missing. Um, 
Yeah. Which is interesting because Adeline. Adeline. Mm hmm. Is currently playing Ophelia. Well, mm-hmm. not currently, but. In that mm-hmm. time she was. Mm-hmm. Which I'm going to be curious how the dad knew that. You know, so well, yeah. I, I'm I'm going to be see, curious how the, he tied it all together, and we know he probably has an idea of that because um, it says mom was stunned by this. She had spent years begging dad to accompany her to the theater, and he had no interest. And all of a sudden, before he leaves, he has a huge interest in William Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious how he he's going to know or how he knew that they were connected. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ben starts going through some photographs. Yes, um, which were in a secret file behind a secret picture wall. Yeah, I was a little. Oh. I, I just kind of pushed it. As, I mean, I yeah, understood. I it was jumped secret. ahead. Of you. No, no, no. Yeah, no sorry, you're right. No, you're right. Um, I was going in that direction. I just was very, like, I understand it was in a secret wall or something. I the description kind of left me like I couldn't picture it in my head. I don't know if you could clarify. Yes. So he had he had gone into a overstuffed closet, mm-hmm. climbed like pushed a thing, which unlocked a photo on the other side of the wall, which he had to take a step oh stool God, and yeah. go up. Open the photo that was on the hinge because he has like a wall of framed photos. So this was at the very top of like two vials that um, he had dug up during an ex like an archaeological dig that was supposed to be the elixir of life. Uh-huh. And he pulls out this big fat file of photos throughout the years. Okay, gotcha. So that's that's how we got to where we are. Okay, so that's thank thank you for explaining that because I was a little confused. Hmm. Um. So, uh, there's a lot of information here. Yes, it's another info dump. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we even want to go in? I mean, I guess we should go into it. It's just a lot. Um, that, it's the whole thing. That's what this whole chapter is about. That's true. Uh, yeah. is, is a big info dump. Yeah. Um, this is the part when I was first, like, picking out the Edward and Jacob thing. For some reason, I wrote Ben as Edward. And then on the next page, I wrote, okay, wait, no, this is definitely Jacob. <laughs> And yes. the other guy is Edward. Um, but, but, yeah, that's a null point. Um, <laughs> so, um, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know if you want to try to... Sure. So, they are talking about uh, his exploring and finding these two vials, which were supposedly the elixir of life. Um, and then it goes into... Ben is trying to be, like dropping hints while he's speaking to her. So going, why do you think your father hired me? Oh, because to be a bodyguard. No, that's why your mother hired me. Why do you think your father hired Wait, me? Wait, I thought the way you're reading she this wrote, when she said for your knowledge, and he said, no, that's why your mom hired me. Well, right. yeah, your knowledge. That. That's no. why your mom hired me. You know, you're right. You're right. They were looking for a bodyguard and they hired him specifically for the knowledge. Um, so you're right with the mom, mom saying and then that her dad hired him as the bodyguard who would also have an open mind about things. He hired Correct. him for what he didn't know, which was beyond human understanding. Ugh, mm-hmm. I hate that. <laughs> anyway. He said, and I didn't know if he was trying to quote my father or did it inadvertently. Mm. So he's a, be- he's a believer of things that are beyond, you know, so it's, which is weird. Uh, he has, like, not that it's weird that you believe in things beyond. Right, yeah. But all the stuff that's under his belt, that's why his father hired him. Because he's a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> a rich conspiracy theorist. Oh, we don't know if Ben's rich. Oh, sorry. I was talking about the, the dad, father. But yeah, oh, okay. sorry. Um, and so Ben pulls out um, a photograph and talks about the people in the background of the photograph. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he said his her dad like enlarged the photo, and he made like so you could see the uh, the strangers in the background. And Ben says, "See anything familiar?" And you know, Clea just doesn't you know catch the point, but she's mm-hmm. uh, imagining where it's going. And then she sees uh, like a wave of dizziness washed over me, and I clutched the counter to steady myself. He was there, the man from my dreams. Mm-hmm. So. Apparently her dad, <laughs> sorry, her dad knew about this stuff. Because uh, he was drawn to it, mm-hmm. just like she was drawn. Oh, that's right. I forgot mm-hmm. to say that. Yeah. And um, so her dad has known about this 
for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Since she was a baby. Essentially, yeah. Because um, he's collected this big thing. Um, there was her the day she was born, and then we have her as being strapped to mom while she was made on the political campaign. Right. And we have them on vacation when she's a toddler. And then we have, like, her first birthday. And all of these um, are pictures of him somewhere in the background. Mm-hmm. Which is so creepy. A phantom, as Ben calls it. Yeah, and I wrote... I'll, and this is harsh, but I wrote it. I wrote... The re- reviews were right. My brain is melting. <laughs> like, I was reading this, and I was like... I can't take this. Like, I, because up until this point, I felt pretty optimistic. And then I got to here and I was like, nope, I'm kind of checked out now. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Um, I still like it. <laughs> it's bad. It's written very badly. Yeah. But I still like it. I like yeah. it. Um, so what do, you, what do you feel about Ben telling Clea up to this point? Because he didn't get into the theories of what this mystery person, which we don't have a name yet. Like, no, all no. those dreams, she has not mentioned his name yet. Um, well, I guess he hasn't given a name yet. No. Yeah. So how do you feel about Ben's, just like, here's all photo evidence of this weird guy following you since the day you were born? Maybe he wants to hear what Cleo has to say. Yeah. And I think, like, I'll be like, Damn. Damn. I was, if I were Clea, I'd be kind of annoyed probably that so much was going on about me that without no my knowledge. Shared. But she does ask about that. Like, she does. Why did nobody tell me about this before? And she does get a little angry about it, which I was glad to see because it's kind of one of those instances where you're thinking something and all you're like, okay, is it going to address this? And then it did. Mm-hmm. Um, it does it several times in this. So um, then Ben starts going into the theories of what this phantom is and he pulls out a book that's very occult yeah um it has a circle on the front um with a it's a it's a leather bound book and i really like the descriptions of the book itself talking about uh the mismatched page sizes everything was hand bound um the leather on the front was cracked but the pages were soft and worn so i really like that type of description um and he goes into how saying that the cover had a large embossed circle on it representing everlasting life. Um, and Ben goes into explaining how his father had two ideas of what this phantom could be. And the first one being a guardian angel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You guys want to elaborate that? So I'm just giving exposition right now. I'm just like telling. I think it kind of weird that her guardian angel constantly looks sad in all the pictures, yeah. A, and B, he never looks at her. Like, I get that the dad feels that the guardian, or this mm. this person in the picture seems to be focused on her, mm-hmm. but he's never looking at her. A guardian angel usually looks down on you, right? Like, it's looking after you. Why would he yeah. never look at you? Mm-hmm. In any of the pictures, he's always looking somewhere else. Like, he's just kind of, like, waiting. And you're right. He has his fists clenched, and he looks sad and hunched. So that's yeah. how he's described in every photo. Yeah. Like, he doesn't look like he's just this bena- benevolent spirit that's just there to make sure that everything is okay with you. Yeah. Well, the other option is um, he could also be what's called an incubus. Which, this is a very bad description of what an incubus is. Thank you. I thought, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, an an incubus is not a spirit, but a devil. And they are actually physical forms. They're not, like, spiritual. They're Mm -hmm. not, like, a phantom. They're not a ghost. Incubi are real physical things. So, it... In lore. (laughs) Quote, unquote, real physical things. Yeah. Um, so they have mass to them and they impregnate. Well, yeah, it says the spirit women. is, um, the spirit is kind of sexual in nature. And I sort of course it is. Yeah. Um, and there's a picture of, um, a woman. I don't know if I can find it. Um, I think so. I can't find it right now, but like, it looks like she's in, or do you know where it yeah. is? Yeah. Again, dad, I fixed a post-it note to a page near the sleeping woman. 
Uh, so the, it's a picture of a sleeping woman and a winged man above her, rendered in shades of red. He had the body of a god, but his face was monstrous, and he leered down at an innocent-looking sleeping woman, his arms spread wide and every muscle taunt with coiled rage as he prepared to spring. Mm-hmm. So that was the description of the, the incubus. Yeah. It's important to take note of his body language in those photos whether it be the clenched fist like this. And you're right, I did reread that part. And uh, he is just... Sitting, like, like unhappy, but unhappy. sitting. Yeah. It's important to recognize the body language in those parts because that's an indicator that maybe it could possibly be the incubus. So uh, that's why the, f- the father pointed out uh, the body language of the incubus in the book and was like, is this Clea? Because the... The presence is always there and has the two different body languages, the guardian and the aggressor. So but it seems like he's really neither. Exactly. And that's what he you're supposed to be picking have, up. Yeah. It almost seems like the dad wasn't sure which one he was either, I, you know, he, which one he was either because his body language does, is not consistent with anyone who's watching over someone benevolently. Which is why. Or yeah. someone who is like just waiting for a chance to spring. You know, mm-hmm. he's neither. He's just sitting there. He's not a happy person or whatever, his spirit. But he's never making eye contact. He's never looking at the child directly. He's always in the background, in the shadows, just there. Just there. Yeah. And which is important, which is why the qu- the post-it notes had question marks. Yes. After it. I have a feeling that if the spirit was leaning one way or the other that dad probably would have maybe brought him up exactly or maybe it would Mm -hmm. have been a bigger thing because he didn't know Mm. yeah it didn't seem like a threat yeah so uh we learned that ben um i'm I'm just trying to push this along guys Yeah, yeah we learned that ben um Poses all these ideas that her father had with uh, the the spirit, and um, basically saying he didn't know what it was. I don't know what it was. We all kept it a secret because we didn't want you to freak out. And she did get angry, like you had pointed before. Um, let me bring up. And then he's like, I closed the you book. "Should not go to Rio." <laughs> yes, I yeah. That's what, I forgot about that part. Because he's worried now that he is showing up um, and that she is now seeing aware him. Aware of him. Aware of him. him. Yeah. yeah. Did she tell him already about her dreams or it's just the pictures? Um, just the pictures. So she has not mentioned to Ben that he the, the spirit is in her dreams now? Correct. I don't think she had mentioned that point. Because she didn't... Uh, no, I know that she didn't. Okay. Yeah. Um... So, talk about you. And then she gets offended, uh, thinking that maybe Ben knows her dad more than she does. And then literally, two um, paragraphs later, she's like, no, no, it's okay. I actually know my dad better. Uh, which is kind of funny to me. Uh, it's, just, it's extreme thinking, going from one hot and cold, which she does suffer from, from her psychiatrist. Uh, the, the point her psychiatrist meant. So, she had solidified her plan to go to Rio and kill two birds with one stone. One, to take pictures of the carnival, and two, to actually kind of figure out what happened with her father. So we're going into another dream sequence yes, uh, where things get dark again. This correct? is interesting, yeah. Um, this is when they're like, she's at the diner, and they're like cooking spider, or specifically tarantulas. Mm-hmm. And I, I looked into this because I had a dream about spiders one time. I looked into like what it means when you dream about spiders. Um, sometimes it means you feel like an outsider or has to do with feminine power or overbearing mother figure. I don't think that really has anything to do with this. No. So I'm just going to say it's just something scary. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. So they're cooking burgers. And when the cook slid the plate in front of me, it was actually a, a grilled tarantula. Yes. Um. And she gasped, looking up at the cook, who was Ben. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she is, she's looking at the plate, and she can feel 
him uh, feel this mystery guy behind her. And she asked him, should I be frightened? To which he replied, why bother? It all ends the same. So that's, it's, it's curious because we're, uh, I got the past chapter. So they're alluding that they've been down this road before. It feels like that is her soulmate. They've been through several lives together and it all ends the same way. So it all ends in tragedy is what it feels like. Um, that's what I have been getting from the cap, uh, the past couple of chapters that no matter what life they've lived, it all ends in tragedy. She turns to face the man, uh, his eyes deep and intoxicating as ever, only now they stared at mine from a rotting skull. Kiss me, he hissed, and I wanted to run, but I couldn't move. So that's it. We're going back into the scary dreams again. Yeah. Uh, so she wakes up and she's... Uh... She wakes up, she gets freaked out because she thinks a spider is on her face, but it's just she fell asleep and <laughs> on a playing card. Yeah. Um, and so, um, well, actually it says, but the nightmares didn't last, nor did my, or well, what does she mean by that? So my dream time love was now the stuff of nightmares. Good. Better, really. I have more perspective that way, but the nightmares didn't last, nor did my romantic... Oh. Oh. fantasies come back the two somehow morphed together so now it was both right it right. was the dreams that she's been having previously with the four women but not going well mm -hmm. so in each one of those dreams then what follows she is with him but then something goes wrong and it's always that third man that somehow causes it mm -hmm. so giovanni when she's olivia then Julian, who seems like Ben. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was an interesting detail. Yeah. While she's on her way down the aisle as Emily. Mm -hmm. And um, in each one, she doesn't necessarily die. But something's definitely not going well. Now, the one where he hits her over the head, that's um, or that's what it, the Giovanni one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one's a little bit more like straightforward. Like he obviously hurt some other people and now he's hurting her but the one where she is Annaline and mm -hmm. she's at her wedding that one was a little weird because this Julian guy who looks like Ben stabs her through her heart with a roses rose mm -hmm. remember her number one fan mm -hmm. but no one else notices it's almost like he's killed her without anyone else noticing her death. So I would say at this point, he's the incubus, maybe? He's mm. the one who's trying to get her. Mm -hmm. And the other guy keeps in getting in the way. Yeah. Do you think that whoever this mysterious man is, is tampering with her dreams, and if so, knows about Ben and wants to input this idea into her head that he could be it's a possibility but it seems like there's always a third person that does not let the two lovers have a happy ending there's yeah. always someone there's always once a jacob they get to get, there's yeah. always a jacob always a jacob yeah. i feel that um it's not as mal not malicious i don't feel that it is someone preventing them to get together i feel that or like trying to place blame on Ben, um, I think it's somebody that takes go takes over because Giovanni started it as this guy's best friend. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he's a bad guy, and Julian wouldn't be walking her down the aisle if he wasn't somebody that was close to them mm -hmm. and is now hurting her. Mm -hmm. I feel like those people maybe are being taken over by somebody evil, right? As she is, mm -hmm. as I don't, I don't, I don't, obvious. I don't feel that it's anyone taking over. I feel that uh, these are reflections of her past life and in each life, because uh, time is a circle, mm -hmm. so each life that comes by is always going to be three triangles, which is why he is so, the unnamed guy is so upset in all these pictures he because this is gonna how it's going to end and this is the w one time he doesn't have a physical body. So they mm -hmm. um, each past life it's always been him her and this third person, Ben, and um, 
this time he missed out on the body. So it's literally just him. It's just Ben and her. And he's always in the background. And he can't reach her. That's how oh, I feel this is going. I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah. I just figured eventually okay. he'll become real. Yeah. This is how I'm, I, I'm feeling it. So yeah. that's why he's looking so forlorn Lorne in all those pictures. Because he's not there. Right. He can't be with but his love. But what if he is somewhere and she's in his pictures? Because they're not in proximity to each other. Mm. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. You read the book, just tell us. No. no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> those other things. Because I'm just saying, like, foreshadowing hints. I don't want to spoil yeah. it. Can you foreshadow? Is he a real person? I believe he Somewhere. was a real point at one point. A real person at one point. He looks like he never dies. I think he okay. is the his constant. Ear, here's yeah. the foreshadowing. Constant. She keeps, like... His outfit doesn't change. Is that what you're going to say? His outfit? Well, I was just going to say, think of Twilight. Just think of Twilight. That's he never my foreshadowing. Dies. So he never dies, but she comes back... She basically is a reincarnation, so yeah. she has to die, and then she she is then almost like her spirit's reborn in another woman every once in a yeah. while. But maybe he's upset because he knows it's never really going to end well. Mm -hmm. And maybe he's waiting until she's old enough to get freaky with him before <laughs> he actually shows up in flesh and blood. I don't know. I. I don't know. I see Danielle over there, kind of shaking her head a little. I, I still, I'm not saying anything. I think it's. I think the the clothes are an indicator, because he's wearing the same clothes in every single photo, and I think that is. I I think that's going to be an indicator of what time he should be in. Because if he's like a if he's this yeah. old spirit that lived all these lives, he'd be wearing older clothes. Why is he wearing? He's not a spirit. What I would assume so because you talk about ghosts every. He's like, wearing other outfits. Are you saying? Are you talking about if he's just in the pictures or if we saw him physically one day? I think. Um, no, I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking. If if we saw him one day, she, he's going to be in that outfit. Um, but I also don't feel that. I don't. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a spirit. I because, think that like, he is attached to her. I think they're attached to each other. So in all pictures where she is, he shows up in whatever garb essence. That, oh yeah. Yeah, he happens to be. But it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that when she actually comes across the person who he is, like a life, flesh, and blood person, he would be wearing the same clothes. I feel that time is a circle, and he just missed reincarnation this time around. Or I was, was going to say, young. it's definitely something, like, when I was reading this, I definitely thought, like, reincarnation. Yeah. That's what was my first for thought. For her, not for him, though. Yeah, that's what I mean. He missed right. the reincarnation this time around. Right. So he's just in modern garb. Which, what's going on with which that, Which is what then? he was supposed to be in. Right. You know? Yeah. But that, well, uh, I don't I know. know if I agree <laughs> with that 100% now, because if it is a reincarnated kind of feel, then he would still be growing up with her. So in her fourth, like when she was in fourth grade, he would also be in fourth grade because his spirit is still aging until the next reincarnation. So I don't, I'm not sold on unless, that I think Unless he's been halted. the same one. I think yeah. he's constantly the same. Maybe he's cursed He's yeah. never somehow. changed. Like a vampire. So obviously yeah, he's like 14 a vampire, yeah. and he's still 22 because he's been 22 for like hundreds and hundreds of years. He's That's like Edward. Like, I hate that. Hey girl. Yeah. How, how old he's are you? waiting. Yeah. So he's like spiritually stalking her. Oh, so you, astro projection. Yeah. Astro projection. You can wear okay. whatever you want when I you're see, astrally projecting. I see what you're according saying. According to my sources. Can we like <laughs> talk about that scene from Twilight where she's like, how old are you? And he's like, 17. She's like, how long have you been 17? A while. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay. No, so he yeah. can't approach her when he's like, um, you know. I don't think, I don't think he's ever going to physically meet her. Okay. I don't I think, think it's so. ever going to be physical. All right. Okay. Let's make a call right now. You say you're not gonna phys or she's not gonna physically meet him. What are you saying? Flesh and blood are gonna go. Bow, bow. Bing, and bing. him, flesh and blood, or is he possessing someone? Flesh and blood. No, like he's a real per like he's a okay. real person who just doesn't die. Okay. I'm excited. I don't. I don't. I don't. I. I think. I don't think he's flesh and blood. Only because I'm also thinking of the Make Cobalt series. Um, 
Meteor? Mediator? Is that the woman who wrote The Princess Diaries? Yes. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But you're missing it. All the <laughs> all the signs point to a fountain of youth, life everlasting. That's flesh and blood. I forgot Holds about that, that actually. Age. I forgot that. Doesn't that doesn't mean he died and he's just now a ghost. That means that this person can't die. It's like talk everlasting. Mm-hmm. It's like he drank from those vials <laughs> that the archaeology dig dug up. And mm-hmm. that's why they were empty. He you read those them. so damn quickly, those chapters. I could never You're do that. You're so informed. And then he's like, I'm never going to die. I'm going to love this woman forever. Like a oh, what if, what if <gasps> she he drank one and that gave him life forever and she drank the other and now she just keeps getting reincarnated. She didn't drink it because there's two, vo- like, I don't think she drank it. What if oh, she didn't drink it? Him, one was for her. What if she it was like a Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, what if it was like a Romeo and Juliet situation? The bad guy drank the other one. The bad guy drank the other Or it was knocked out of her hand. And so now he's life everlasting and she's not. And he just has to keep waiting for her to be, be born again. Oh, and it all ends the same. <laughs> They're stuck in this. They're stuck in it. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> you know what? You really shouldn't be reading ahead. It's like messed up. Oh, she read it a long I time understand. ago. Yeah. Plenty of time to forget. And forget. look, we, <laughs> we're not we reading po- another book that you've read already. Yeah. I actually up. agree. I hate reading. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know why I put this on the list either. Just like Cursed Child. <laughs> no, next time maybe we'll choose a book and we won't tell Our you until like the a book. week before. Oh, I don't like that. No, no. because then you're going to pick it up and read it ahead of time. <laughs> Well, I like to read it a little. No. You read no, the chapters no, you assign. The, we assigned six chapters. We were planning on recording three episodes. Look, you know, we wouldn't have done it. No. Uh, I mean, we, that's what but, our plan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I'm waiting because I teach my child. You really should apologize for that behavior. Anyway, I said just excuse me after I stared you down like a mother no, should. I didn't I purpose excuse? Oh my gosh. Me. I think so. I don't know. It's recorded, so we'll, we'll find, find out. We'll find out. We'll find there was out. an awkward silence of at least I ten think, seconds while I stared at you. I didn't think it was awkward. I thought it was like, oh, what's gonna happen? <laughs> I thought you like it was smelly <laughs> and you were annoyed with. It. <laughs> You were like, let's get ready to rumble. No, that already happened with your predicting what's going to happen. That's why I said, bing, bing, bing. You're going oh, up. I didn't hear I'm the ding, excited, ding, too, because yeah. I feel like I'm right. I'm really interested, too, because, like, I, I do forget kind of what happens. I know some of it, so I know one of you is right. Um, I know what that means. It's that you. means me. Mm-hmm. I didn't I know, say that. It's pissing me yeah, off. I didn't say know, that. Because she forgot about the vials and then I did forget about the goddamn vials. That, yeah. that means nothing. Because well the reason yes, I it does. the reason I say it means nothing is Don't. because Shh. I'm not saying who it is. Shh. Okay. Static. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quiet. Ugh. I won't say anything. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> You're like my mom, always ruining her own Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I did not say I got you. It, I she, did. My mom does that constantly. You had to know that one I of you it. is right. So I'm not saying who it was. I'm just saying one of you is right. And then there's other fine details that I forget. <laughs> one of us is right and one of us is not. Okay. That's what I mean. Like, you don't know. <laughs> so we're just going to keep reiterating this. <laughs> That's the whole podcast. Like, we're going to record a whole episode. So, uh, our sponsors are Audible, oh. in which you could get one book for a 30-day free trial. If you follow our link, uh, audible.com slash B-A-B-A-T, 180 titles, which could be yours. And once you subscribe, the book is yours Forever. 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 And oftentimes, like, the books that you could get through Audible are at an extremely reduced cost. Like, um, I believe the one time we looked something up and it was, like, a $40 value that you could get off of Audible for 15 bucks, which yeah, is yeah. really pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. You also get a reduced price if you purchase the book, like, on Kindle, for example, and you can upgrade yes. to an Audible version. Mm-hmm. Like a oh, little really? Extra. I did that yeah, with I Frankenstein. I did that with my mom because oh, that's sometimes really cool. I'll read books that she wants to read too, but she doesn't read anymore because her eyesight's not so great. So what we'll do is we'll get this. I'll get the book. I will buy up a little bit extra for the Audible version as well. Mm-hmm. And then I read the book on my Kindle app and my mom will listen to it on her Audible app, which is actually my Audible, Audible. app. This is my account. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice that way because if you did not have a mother... I mean, we all have a mother. (laughs) But if you didn't have a mother that wanted to listen to the book, but let's say you're reading a book and you're going to go on a trip and you know you're not going to have time to keep reading the book, but you're really into it. That's really smart. You could get both. 
You could get the book on Kindle, upgrade to an Audible version for cheaper, and you can basically bounce around. And they actually connect the two apps. I was going to yes. ask. So, yeah. like, for example, if when I read the book with my mom, I have to be careful not to hit go to the last page yeah. that mm. was read because the system, the apps can communicate and they can tell the last page that w that the apps stopped on. Yeah. So if, let's say, That's I read up really to page cool. 10, mm -hmm. but then my mom started the book and she read up to page 20. When I go open my app, it'll say last page read was like page 20 do you want to go to it i'll say no and i'll be back up to where i need to be mm -hmm. but if let's say this was all me and i was going on a trip or let's say i was driving to work and i'm like oh you know what i feel like listening to my book because i stopped in a really good chapter last night mm -hmm. i could go ahead and i can turn on audible and continue that's book really cool without having to read it i didn't know that that's really yeah, awesome they work yeah. really well together actually i was gonna say they also have like discount things sometimes where like they'll say oh well if you actually purchase this on kindle you'll get the book for um on audible for free yeah and like i did that with frankenstein one time the book was on sale for like a dollar 99 and i got it for free on audible so it was awesome that's good mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. so cool yeah so yeah Check out Audible, folks, because it's awesome. And they have a new thing on there where they have Audible Originals, where, like, they have Celebrity. Oh. They just started it. That's pretty cool. It's like Netflix Originals. Kind of, yeah. And they have, like, I don't know, I guess the stories are written for Audible. I'm not quite clear how that works, but they have Celebrities reading them. Um, and you get, if you're an Audible member, you get two free a month. Cool. Yeah. Cool. That's really neat. It is neat. So. All right. Uh, also, shout out to Katie Hartung. She did our cover art, and uh, it's all the cool little logo that you see everywhere. Um, did we pick music for this yet? We did not. Oh, not yet, folks. Yikes. So it'll be in our show notes, <laughs> folks. Just have patience with us. Um, you can find us on all different types of social medias. We have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, group, and a page. Um, you could find us online. We have our website, uh, B-A-B-A-T podcast.com. I always forget the podcast part. Mm. B-A-B-A-T podcast.com. Uh, you could leave us a voicemail. You could send us an email. Um, it has all of our episodes on there, which you could get pretty much any place. Um, but we really encourage people to listen to us on iTunes just so we could track who's – not who's listening, but how many people are listening. <laughs> That's Google's job. Yeah, it's Google's job. And what type of content you're really looking for. Actually, there is a review on iTunes. <gasps> we have a review? Don't get too excited, okay? Oh, well, we'll get excited. It's pretty shitty, isn't no, it? No, it's not. It, well, you'll, once I explain why, you'll probably laugh and then be like, oh, hold on. Wait, wasn't there a review once before that we talked too much or something? No, uh, no. My mom said that. Oh. It was mom. just my mom. Mom? <laughs> my mom said we laugh too much. <laughs> mom. It's like she hasn't known you all your life. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring it up. Uh, where's the reviews? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's a five-star review. I'd say this is the best podcast around. This show features two awesome hosts reading books to see if they're actually as bad as Twilight or better. It is a fun time, at least I think so, and of course I would encourage you to listen. I always have a fun time. Is that a generated one from iTunes? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's it. Oh my god. Oh my god, that is so funny. At least you admit it. No, good, job. good job owning up to <laughs> It says XOX Danielle 18. So I'm like, well, it's not apparently me, but it says Danielle. So <laughs> I wasn't sure if you'd be laughing. Like, Danielle. I was 18 for? I was 18 <laughs> when I made it. Wait. Oh. What? what? Not your the screen? review. When I made the screen name. Yeah. Oh, okay. You should never, you should never age oh, yourself. Oh, my God. That was so Look. funny. <laughs> that was so funny. I wasn't sure if you'd be laughing or be like... Why? <laughs> why, Danielle? Why? Why do you make these decisions? <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, I feel like so relieved next when I was writing. I was like, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> <I'm just writing. laughs> well, it's funny because like we people tell us that they listen to us and they like it, but they don't just they don't write reviews. Right? It makes me sad. Yeah, fam. Literally, my fam. Yeah, <laughs> to it, Dylan. 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 
Feel it. Anyways, so let's get going. <laughs> All right. I'm folks, ready. Folks, thank you for listening. This has been a long ass episode. I hope you stuck with us through the whole thing. Oh, it's going to be edited down a lot it's, by me. <laughs> trust. I agree with you. <laughs> you're, you're editing? Uh huh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yes, yeah, she do. I what do you mean? Know. What's wrong with her? You better leave the hot dogs in. That oh, was that's my, her. That was, that's my episode. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll, I will leave the hot dogs in. I'll probably cut about half of this out. Please oh, yeah. do. Please do. Yeah. Oh, bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>